artists. Today we are learning to define Impressionism, outline the key elements of Impressionistic art, name some well-known Impressionistic artists. This lesson is the first of three parts. Today we are going to start our lessons by answering a few questions about a work of art. Get a pen or a pencil and the activity sheet that accompanies this lesson. You may pause this video as you try to answer each question. Are you ready? Take a look at this painting. Scan the screen with your eyes. If you want, you may Google this image and you will see a high-resolution version online that allows to zoom in the image and will let you see the details up to the finest brush stroke. First, list down five things that you see in the picture. Next, jot down words or phrases about what you think. Finally, list down what this picture makes you wonder. Be ready with your list for our discussions later. Now it's time for you to meet the painting and the artist. This painting is called the Japanese Footbridge. It's an oil painting by Claude Monet. It was painted in 1899. Claude Monet was a French painter and he's known around the world as one of the most important painters in the history of art. He changed the way artists painted and the way people looked at paintings. And today, his pictures are among the most expensive on earth. So you gotta know about him. Let's hear his story. Bonjour, mes amis. I am Claude Monet. I was born in Paris, in France, and I'd be over 150 years old by now. Here's me, when I was a little boy, staring out of the window in our house in Paris. And there's Notre Dame, the huge cathedral out of the window. My father was a successful shopkeeper, and he was always at his desk doing his accounts. But my mother, well, she loved painting and reading, but above all, she loved music, and she would often sing her heart out at home. When I was five, my parents decided to move to the seaside, to a town called Le Havre, because my father was going to run the family business, a grocer's shop. See him there, serving customers? What about me? I love playing outside, building sandcastles, and feeling that salty sea air on my face. I went to the local school in Le Havre, but working hard didn't interest me so much. All the other boys were such swats. I preferred to draw pictures and funny cartoons instead of learning. And my funny faces, uh, what we call uh, caricatures, were pretty popular. Soon I was selling them for 15 francs apiece and people were queuing up to buy them. It was a great way to earn pocket money. When I was selling my pictures, I ran into Monsieur Bouddha. He was an artist and that's what I really wanted to be. He was different from all those stuffy painters because he liked to sit on the beach in the fresh air and do his paintings there, rather than inside a hot, quiet room. In French, we call this open-air painting 
en plein air. And it certainly was windy. I got seagull poo in my pictures and my pepper flew around in the sea breeze. But it certainly felt exciting and I loved it. I loved it. No artist painted outside very much in my day. They went to galleries and copied stuff. So painting outside, en plein air, was a new way to paint. We were a young bunch of artists painting outside in the sun, the rain and the wind. This is one of my own paintings. I like these two women sitting on the beach. I use thick splodges of paint and there's even bits of sand stuck onto the picture. It was a messy business. So what do you need to paint outside? I'll tell you. A portable painting kit that you can carry around with you in a case. That's very important. You also have to have an easel and a stool. You'll need a paint palette, canvases of course, and tubes of paint. This had only just been invented. Before that, you had to carry your paint in little bags made of pig bladders. Yuck! By now, I was absolutely sure that I wanted to be an artist. But the trouble was, my dad, he wanted me to take over the grocery shop. No merci! He went nuts when I told him I was off to Paris to go to painting school. But which school? It won't surprise you to hear that the art schools in Paris in my day were pretty strict and traditional. I don't like following rules, so I didn't bother with the old-fashioned lot. Instead, I signed up with a mad, daring art school where they tried out crazy new ideas! This is the kind of picture that people were used to. Grown up, serious, about history, oh, not everyday life at all. Now remember what I was painting. Two ladies sitting on a beach with bits of sand and my egg sandwich stuck to it. Not very serious, but it was real life and it was natural. That's me, Claude Monet, the open air artist. That's my thing. While I was in Paris, I met another painter called Edouard Manet. He took me on painting picnics. We used to go out by the river and paint and laugh and drink wine and have fun. I love the water, probably ever since we moved to the seaside when I was little. Painting water is impossibly difficult. It keeps on moving, but that is what makes it fun. I bought a boat and converted it into a floating art studio so that I could get closer to the water. I would often go out with my girlfriend Camille and we would sit there bobbing around on the lake as I painted. Lucky for me, she didn't mind getting her dress wet or her hair messy. <laughs> Do you think that those stuffy old judges at the art competition in Paris like my work? No, 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 no! I don't call this proper painting! Oh, no, absolutely pas! Today, my pictures sell for tens of millions of pounds. Ha, ha, ha! So there! Being turned down by the art competition was an awful disappointment. No one understood my new way of painting, and that made me feel like a loser. Camille had just given birth to our little son. My pictures were not selling very well, and money was very short. And I honestly thought about throwing myself into the river and ending it all. I nearly did. But thank goodness for friends! My artist pals really cheered me up. With our baby, we moved to a tiny house just outside Paris, and my mates used to come and paint with me. My best friend was Jean Renoir, and together we painted boats, the water, the sunshine, the wind, and the rain. 
Painting the weather is even worse than painting water. It is always changing. <laughs> Claude Monet. That's me. The Impressionist painter. Why am I called that? Because of this painting. Impression Sunrise, which I did when I was 34. I could not really call it a proper sunrise. It was more a feeling, an idea of the sun rising. So I called it an impression. That word, impression, became the name for all paintings like this. Ones that aren't exactly copies of something, but instead give you a feeling or a mood. I was still struggling for money, but then I had a stroke of luck. A really rich man, Mr. Hawk Shader, together with his wife Alice, took a fancy to my new fangled paintings, and they asked me to paint some pictures for them, and paid me handsomely. He was so smartly dressed, and his wife was so pretty, I felt a bit of a slob next to them. I used to go to their huge mansion and work there. But my good luck ran out only a year later. Monsieur Hochschäder went bust, and he lost all his money. He stopped buying paintings, and then he abandoned his wife Alice and his children and disappeared. Oh, sacré bleu! So, Camille and I invited Alice and her five children to move in with us to our tiny house by the river. It was a real squash, and there were lots of mouths to feed, so I needed to keep working hard. Just two years later, Camille became very ill. Even though the doctors tried to save her, they couldn't. And she died. I was desperately sad without my wonderful wife, who was my number one supporter. But even when she was lying there dead, I just could not resist painting a picture of her. Is that really awful? I had to do it. And here it is, Camille lying peacefully at rest. Am I a weirdo? No! I am an artist, and I have to paint things that move me. At last, my paintings were starting to sell. And together with Alice, we finally moved with the children to a house by the water in Giverny, near Paris. And I set about making a beautiful garden full of flowers and water. As you know already, I like being outside. I like feeling the air and seeing the light change, and I try to catch that feeling by painting the same thing in different weather, in what is called a series. I found these poplar trees, and I made a series of them, painting them over and over again as the weather changed. I remember I was really busy with the poplar trees, when one day a woodchopper turned up and said he had to cut them down for timber. No, no, you can't, I said. And I dug into my pocket and gave him money on the condition that he would wait until I'd finished my work before he chopped them down. That was lucky, because now you can see these trees and how I painted them in all kinds of weather. Here's me, Claude Monet. I am an old man now with very bad eyesight, walking with Alice along the edge of the lily pond that I made myself. As it turns out, my paintings of these water lilies under the bridge are probably my most famous pictures. Have you ever seen them? You should! They are brilliant! Look at this. You can see the lilies, but in the water you can also see the reflections of trees and clouds in the sky. Pretty good, don't you think? You should give it a try sometime. So what's the big deal with Claude Monet? Why should you know about him? He began the Impressionist style of painting. No more stuffy history pictures. Lots of outdoor paintings of everyday life. Flowers, water, boats, trees, people. He never lost sight of his new style of painting, even when times got tough. 
The Impressionist style he started changed the way people painted. Thank you, Claude Monet. Now that you have had an overview of the Impressionist movement, you may try to search more artworks online and see if you can identify which of them belongs to the movement. For next week, be prepared with the material of your choice. Choose a spot outside your house. It could be your garden, it could be overlooking your balcony, or it could be somewhere near your house but where you're allowed to paint. See you next week.